How can we defend our Ummah, the Muslim nation, from the moral decay of today's world? An often neglected wisdom of our deen holds the key to our salvation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Abu Abdul Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good and forbidding all that is evil. And it is they who are the successful. This ayah is a call to action for all of us. But what does it actually mean? Before Islam, the Arabian Peninsula was steeped in moral corruption. Islam came to fix that, emphasizing the duty of enjoining good and forbidding evil, a mission carried by all the prophets. In an age where everyone is living in their own little bubble, with their necks bent and their eyes glued to their phones, we forget that we humans were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be social creatures and that we depend on one another. In today's world, we see an emphasis on individuality like never before. And this often leads to a detachment from the collective well-being of our ummah. While personal freedom is important, it does not mean that we have no responsibility in helping each other do what is most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our religion teaches us the profound principle of enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil. It fills us with a compassionate concern for the well-being of others, both Muslim and non-Muslim, urging us to emphatically correct and support those veering towards harming themselves. When we ignore enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil, we're not just allowing individuals to harm themselves, but also letting the fabric of our entire Ummah, our entire community weaken. It's a collective duty, a shared responsibility to uplift each other towards the path of righteousness and well-being for the greater good of all. So let's get practical. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran biyadihi fa illam yastati' fa bi lisanihi fa illam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika adha'afu al-iman. This means whoever among you sees an evil, let him change it with his hand. And if he cannot, then with his tongue. And if he cannot, then with his heart. And that is the weakest of Iman or faith. It's not always easy, but it's our duty. Suppose you see someone straying from the path. Your duty isn't to criticize or belittle, but to advise with wisdom, kindness and patience. Remember, the prophets والسلام, faced much opposition when they tried to guide their people. We have to be prepared for challenges, but our intention should be clear. It must be for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the betterment of the person that we're advising and ultimately for overall for our ummah. Notice the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa linked changing of al-munkar or evil to the ability to do so. And the ability to change it depends on many factors. For example, the parents of a child have the ability to change al-munkar with their hands by prohibiting that child and forbidding that child from it. However, in most cases, friends can't forbid each other from munkar except by advising them or warning them against whatever sin they're doing. They would change evil with their tongues. Likewise, if greater harm will come from advising the person, i.e. changing the evil even with the tongue, then when that happens, that's when changing it with your heart becomes mandatory. In that case, you must at least hate the evil being done and you must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change it. And of course, in most cases, that also means if you hate something, then you will walk away. You won't be in that gathering where evil is being committed. This duty isn't just for big acts of evil. Deeds of all sizes matter. So if a friend misses a prayer or backbites someone, of course you should gently remind them. But also if they're smoking or dropping litter, you should advise them too. If someone is unsure about a certain practice, then guide them kindly with evidence from the Quran and Sunnah or at least what the scholars say about that deed. To affirm this meaning in our hearts, we think carefully about the following hadith. Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the likeness of the man who observes the limits prescribed by Allah and that of a man who transgresses them is like a people who get on board a ship after casting lots. Some of them are in the lower deck and some of them are in its upper deck. Those who are in the lower deck, when they require water, they go to the occupants of the upper deck. And they say to them, if we make a hole in the bottom of this ship, we will not harm you. If they, meaning the occupants of the upper deck, leave them to carry out their idea, 
they will all be drowned. But if they do not let them go ahead with their plan, then all of them will remain safe. And this hadith is in Bukhari. Subhanallah, what a profound statement. It shows that even one person doing a sin can affect the entire Muslim ummah. If the people in the lower deck create a hole in the ship, it will drown everyone. It won't just drown those in lower deck. And that's why the people in the upper deck should stop the people in the lower deck from creating holes in the ship. So similar to this is how we should enjoin the good and forbid the evil because the entire ummah suffers. This mission of enjoining good and forbidding evil is the backbone of a strong Muslim ummah. Imagine how much change we could bring about if we all took on this role, even in the smallest of ways. Remember, most people, they want to be closer to Allah. Most Muslims, they want to be closer to Allah. So by you advising them is often simply reminding them. Perhaps they've forgotten that this thing is a sin or they just need a little push. But we have to be careful to do this with the best of manners. Our approach should usually be gentle and respectful. Allah says in the Quran and mention in the book, O Prophet, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was surely a man of truth and a prophet. Remember when he said to his father, Oh dear father, why do you worship that which you can neither hear nor see, nor does it benefit you at all? Oh dear father, I have certainly received some knowledge which you have not received. So follow me and I will guide you to the straight path. Oh dear father, I truly fear that you will be touched by a torment from the most compassionate and become Satan's companion in hell. He threatened, the father threatened, how dare you reject my idols, O Ibrahim? If you do not desist, I will certainly stone you to death. So be gone from me for a long time. Ibrahim alayhi salam responded, Peace be upon you. I will pray to my Lord for your forgiveness. He has truly been most gracious to me. As I distance myself from all of you and from whatever you invoke and make dua to besides Allah, I will continue to call upon my Lord alone, trusting that I will never be disappointed in invoking my Lord. So after he had left them and what they had worshipped besides Allah, we granted him Ishaq and Ya'qub and made each of them a prophet. From these ayat, from the beginning, we can see that Prophet Ibrahim السلام, calling his father to worship Allah alone gently, calling him Ya Abati, which is considered a gentle and sweet way to refer to one's father. And even when his father said to him, if you do not desist, I will certainly stone you to death. So be gone from me a long time. Ibrahim السلام, did not respond with anger. He did not raise his voice or insult his father. He simply said, Salamun alayka, peace be upon you. I will pray to my Lord for your forgiveness. If only we Muslims today would learn from the prophets and follow their guidance, we would not have the problems that we have today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to practice and preach this. Ameen. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us strive to be among those who stand up for what's right, guide with wisdom and remain patient in the face of adversity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to stand firm in our iman and guide others in joining the good, forbidding the evil, with wisdom and compassion. Jazakumullahu khairan. Don't forget to share this video with others so that you may be among those who also enjoy the good. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from Mecca. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.